Underground and partisan movements during World War II in European countries developed differently. After the USSR, these movements were the most widespread and effective in the territories of Yugoslavia, Greece, Italy, and Poland. In these countries, resistance to the occupiers formed from the moment they were captured by the Nazi Germany and its satellites. On the contrary, in the countries of Western Europe as well as in Germany itself, the anti-fascist movements at the beginning of the war were more of an informational and propaganda nature. Leaflets were scattered somewhere, sometimes swastika was erased, or orders and decrees of the German occupied authorities were torn from walls and posters. France, one of the great powers, lasted about a month. Previously even less so was Poland, which was considered a strong European country. The rest practically surrendered to the mercy of the conqueror. Only Yugoslavia and Greece offered serious resistance to the enemy. However, soon the situation in many European countries began to change. Partisans and underground fighters from Yugoslavia, Greece, Italy and Poland became more active. And in the countries of Western Europe, the underground struggle began to be more effective and more belligerent. European countries found hope in the possibility of victory over the Nazi machine which mercilessly suppressed and humiliated peoples. The German authorities reacted to the activity of resistance movement accordingly. They intensified repression against the occupied territories. The leadership of the Nazi Germany, through the hands of the punitive units of the SS and Gestapo, as well as local collaborators who served the Germans, sought through brutal repression, execution and torture to suppress the people's desire for freedom. But, as a rule, it achieved the opposite results. The monstrous hostage system, when the first residents of the occupied countries were captured during raids and executed, in retaliation for the actions of partisans and underground fighters, as a result of which German soldiers and officers died, gave only a temporary effect, forcing the resistant fighters only to slightly reduce their activity. But after a while everything repeated again, and the ranks of the underground were replenished at the expense of relatives, neighbors and friends of the executed who wanted to take revenge of the Nazis for the death of their loved ones. But fascists, as if to justify their reputation, once set foot on the path of incredible cruelty and lawlessness, never stopped. The building in the town of Christiansad during the years of occupation was popularly called the House of Horror. Norwegians shrouded at the mere mention of this building. It was run by the chief of the local Gestapo, a certain Rudolf Kerner, an SS Hauptsenführer, who actually was a former German criminal, which we will talk about later. Kerner was a typical SS sadist. The entire team of the southern Norwegian branch of the Gestapo was a match for him. The methods used by the Gestapo can only be compared with the medieval inquisition and the cruelties of the Japanese invaders in Asia. Here is a list of torture used against French anti-fascists. Beating with the bullwhip, bath, the victim was lowered upside down into a bathtub filled with cold water and kept there until the prisoner began to choke. Then the victim was taken out, artificial respiration was done if necessary, after which everything was repeated. Electric shock torture. Wires were attached to the victim's arms, legs or ears. If this did not work, the torture was intensified. One wire was inserted into the anus, the second was attached to the genitalia. Compression, twisting. The lower body was clamped in a vice or twisted. Hanging. The victim's hands were cuffed back. A hook was attached to the handcuffs and the victim was first hung abruptly, then the victim was left hanging in this position for several hours. After such torture, the hands of an unfortunate were disfigured and broken. Burning. The victim was treated with a blowtorch. Almost like a pig after slaughter. At the end of this hell, the prisoners were executed. Here the Germans and their local minions also showed ingenuity. Those sent to death were often hanged not in the traditional way by knocking out the stool from under their feet, but by pulling a rope. That is, the rope was pulled and thus lifted the victim off the ground. This procedure was performed deliberately slowly, so the execution could last half an hour or longer. Subsequently, the Nazi came up with the idea of using piano strings to hang victims. Sadists called this method of execution musical. Executioners had their own sense of humor. By the way, about servant collaborators. In 1941, in occupied France, the Germans created Carling, the French Gestapo, headed by Henri Laffan and Pierre Luttrell, both professional criminals. Doesn't that sound familiar? The head of the Gestapo in southern Norway was a German criminal, and the punitive units of the SS also had both Germans and foreign criminals. The leaders of the German Reich 
had a strange sympathy for criminal element. Laffan and Luttrell recruited many French bandits and recidivists into their punitive gang. Their duties included not only surveillance and arrest of anti-fascists, but most importantly they had to torture, torment and kill their victims in the most inhumane ways. In a speech given in 1941, the chief executioner and inspirer of all Nazi thugs, Heinrich Himmler said, Executions will always be the most difficult task for our soldiers. And despite this, they should not give in to weakness but carry out this task with tightly clenched teeth. Most likely, Himmler clearly exaggerated the difficulties of the executioners. Many of them not only did not clench their teeth, but on the contrary bared those teeth in a devilish smile, clearly enjoying their power over the life and death of people and their, as it seems to them, impunity. The executions of all those who disagreed with the Hitler's regime were placed in Germany on an ideological and legislative basis. After the murder of the underground with the participation of the British Special Services of the Protector of Bohemia and Moravia, Reiner Hedrick, nicknamed the Hanged Man, in revenge on Hitler's personal orders, hundreds of arrested members of the Czechoslovak resistance were shot, and two settlements were completely destroyed, ladies and some beds, all the inhabitants of which were killed. In the fight against Yugoslav partisans and underground fighters, the Germans were helped by the local collaborators, mainly of Croatian origin, the so-called Ustasha. Led by the Croatian Nazi Ante Pavelic, hanging and beheading were commonplace there. In Poland, as in Yugoslavia, the resistance was not united. If in Yugoslavia it was divided into the Yugoslav National Liberation Army and the Chetniks monarchist movement, in Poland there were two main forces opposing the Germans and at the same time each other. The Home Army, subordinate to the Polish government in exile in London, and the Ludewa, or People's Army. Beside them there were smaller anti-fascist organizations, sometimes not subordinate to anyone. The Germans tried to exploit the contradictions between the resistant forces. Agents provocateurs were sent there. Sometimes this work and clashes arose between underground members of different centers. But in the end, the Germans brutally dealt with all members of the resistance groups who felt in their clutches. A large number of Polish patriots were executed after the suppression of the Warsaw Surprising from August 1st to October 2nd, 1944. The Germans did not hesitate to commit outrages on the territory of their Allied satellites. So, as a result of a counterattack in January 1945, the Nazi managed to break into the Hungarian village of Veriba, which had been liberated by the Red Army. The Germans captured 39 Red Army soldiers and subjected them all to brutal reprisals. They took captured soldiers to the local forge, placed their heads on the anvil, and beat them with a blacksmith hammer. 